In this video, we're going to take a look at save plan views. I'll begin with how they work and then show you how to create your own save plan view. A save plan view allows you to control the layer set for your views. In this example diagram, I have three different views, the kitchen, floor plan, and electrical views, all with different layer sets. Reference display can also be saved with save plan views. Reference displays can superimpose a floor above or a floor below over your current floor. You could also superimpose an as-built floor plan over the top of a remodel floor plan. Similar to 3D views that allow you to have multiple cameras open simultaneously, Save Plan Views can also allow you to have multiple 2D views open simultaneously. Save plan views can be saved on a specific floor and could also be zoomed in on a specific area on that floor for convenient access when opening up that particular view. Finally, save plan views can store defaults for tools you use. When you open up a view, the tools are in a specific state for that type of design work. Let me open up a completed project and let's take a look at how the save plan views have been implemented for each of these features I've just discussed. In this sample plan that I have open, you can access your saved plan views from the drop-down up here in the toolbar. You're going to notice the Save Plan View options. You can come down here and you can choose. Subsequently, you can also choose these Save Plan Views over in your project browser. You'll find a category called Plan Views. You can come down here, double-click to open up any of these views, and it will instantly open up a new panel or a new tab and then to switch between these views you can easily come over here and switch between these views. When you start a new plan in Chief Architect, our template plan includes about a dozen different say plan views that are already pre-configured for you. In my sample plan that I have open, I've created a few additional ones that I will typically use for my projects. Let me go ahead and open up the foundation say plan view. Now you're going to notice this opened it up into a new tab it's already on floor zero, and again, as we go through the different views that I have open, the electrical view, the ceiling view, these are using different layer sets and have different looks and different default settings behind each one of them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the settings for this foundation view by coming over, let's right click and click edit view. Let's begin on the general panel. Underneath the general portion of this dialog, the floor is being saved specifically on the foundation floor. Notice that you can choose the different floors you have available in your plan, or you can use any floor. Typically, unless it's very floor specific, in this case the foundation, I will use any floor because that way, if you have a multi-story plan, I don't have to have a view for every single story. I find it most efficient to use any floor, with the exception in this case where the foundation is typically going to be specific on a floor. Right below that is the Remember Zoom and Rotation. When you check that option, your save plan view can be zoomed in on a specific area within your plan. Could be you have a large plan, you want to zoom in on the master bath, and that way you could save a view every time you open it, it would be zoomed in. Here's a few other options down here. You may notice that I have the watermark currently being shown. You'll see that watermark up here that's saved with the view. And then there's some settings for how you want to display your walls. Pony walls are two-part walls and you can control the display if you want the lower wall displayed. Notice in this view the floor plan for the foundation is only using the stem wall. When I switch over and I show you the floor plan view, my view will only show the upper wall type. Some save settings down here to prompt you to save. Let's move over to the Select a Defaults panel. On this panel, you're going to see all of the active defaults, dimensions, text, markers, arrows, etc., right down in here. This collection of settings can be a default set and change all the defaults listed below and you could very easily change that default set with this setting and you can learn more about that video if you watch the defaults and default set video. Toward the bottom of this dialog underneath the layer panel here's where the layer set is being controlled. You have access to all the different layer sets you may have created in your plan. Again the program will ship several for you. One additional default down here in the bottom is the current CAD layer. Anytime you're drawing CAD, maybe a line, maybe a rectangle, 
that will be assigned to a specific CAD layer. Here's where it's being controlled and where you can save it. Reference display allows you to choose if you want to superimpose a floor below or a floor above. And if you want to save it with this, you can have many reference displays. Could be you want to display a floor above and a floor below on your current one. I'll show you an example how that works. You can also superimpose from an external file. One of the things that I like to do is superimpose an as-built floor plan over a model floor plan and you can then save that in your reference display settings. So let's go ahead and close this dialog. Let's move over to the floor plan view and just take a look if I go down to the foundation level and notice that the wall type down here looks quite a bit different than it did on the foundation level. Let's take a look at the Save Plan View settings for this particular view. Let's come over, right click on this view, Edit. And for this particular view, you'll notice that the wall display, unlike the foundation that was just using the lower, this is only using the upper wall type in this case for the floor plan information. I don't want the level of detail of that foundation. So there may be times in this case where my foundation happens to be a daylight foundation and floor plan, I can very easily obtain the two different views and control that through the save plan view. So by coming over to the foundation, you'll notice this view is much more technical than the floor plan view without any dimensions that I have on it. Let me also open up the detailed floor plan. Let's just double click and open up this view. And this particular view has the floor plan dimensions using the same type of wall display and then the layer set also being controlled with this. Now one of the powerful things you're going to find with your save plan views when you start doing your dimensioning or annotating with text, adding callouts, you can control all of your defaults so they're going to come in on a particular layer and also behave in a certain way. Let's go in and edit the view for this floor plan and let's take a look at the selected defaults. In this case, my current defaults are using quarter inch scale dimensions, as is my text, some of my callouts, all using those very specific tools. So when I engage those tools for dimensioning or text, it's going to behave in a quarter inch scale. It's going to come in on a particular layer and it makes it a very easy process and helps me really to create a clean set of construction drawings so that I'm not changing layers, changing font size and changing colors. Let's take a look at how reference display works with a save plan view. I have a view specifically for my deck. When this deck view opens, notice that I'm on floor one in this case. Deck framing is actually completed on the floor below in Chief Architect. The deck framing that you see with beams and the joists underneath of this deck are actually on the floor below and I'm using reference display to superimpose it. If I turn that reference display on and off, you can see what that looks like when I toggle it on and off. Also works out that F9 on my keyboard will toggle that on and off. That reference display control is being saved with my save plan view. If I edit this particular view, let's move over to the reference display section. On this panel, first of all, the red arrow indicates the current view that you're on. Notice that the floor is using the deck layer set and above that is my reference display. It's using the same plan. I mentioned that you can use an as-built plan, a separate plan, or something you want to superimpose. This reference display is not limited to just this plan. Which floor you want to display and what layer set you want to display. And what I've done here is I've created a specific layer set for the deck called reference deck. If you click Define, you're going to see that I've got maybe 10 different items that I wanted to display. I've also set these colors to be, in most cases, pretty muted with the exception of my deck walls that I wanted to be black. So this reference display, I just created a copy of an existing layer set and I made it so that I can superimpose that particular view when I toggle the reference display on. You can toggle it on toggle it off by using the hotkey F9 on your keyboard and again that setting for reference display is saved within your say plan view by checking your reference display and if on the general panel you toggle it on toggle it off maybe you toggled it off it will prompt you to save it 
And the nice thing about that is every time I open up this particular view, the framing that I wanted to superimpose for my deck view, maybe I'm sending this out to my layout construction sheet, then it's set up the way I want it. Let me open up one more plan and I'll show you how to use reference display in an as-built condition. Now in this sample master wing remodel project, when I use the reference display, F9 is a shortcut on my keyboard to superimpose the as-built plan. This is reaching out to a separate file to superimpose this particular as-built footprint over the top. Let's go over to the save plan view and take a look at how this setting works. On the reference display, again the red arrow represents the current view and the current plan using the master wing bachelor remodel project. The plan above it is actually not the same plan. If you drop this down, you'll notice that it can be choose existing plan. A lot of times when I do an as-built and a remodel, I save them in the exact same folder and then it makes it easy to choose it and then you can match the current floor. You can choose the layer set that you want to use. In this case, sometimes I'll build a specific footprint layer set that only has those certain layers on and off. And if you just click the define button here, You'll notice in my display set, here's what's being displayed specifically, and I've turned those layers orange. And then you could also control your line style for how that reference display works. So these settings can be saved along with that plan view, allowing you to quickly turn these things on and off depending on the plan view that you have. Let's take a look at the process of creating your own custom saved plan view. When you begin a new project, I mentioned that the program will have about a dozen different save plan views that will show up in your project browser. The first one is typically the working area. I treat that as kind of a temporary workspace where I'm turning on different layers, maybe different layer sets, changing some of my defaults, and it's more of a temporary workspace. You may notice my, one of my save plan views is a ceiling view, and maybe that's not one that ships with your template file. Let me just open this up. Notice that my save plan view is specific to ceiling. So if you do a reflective ceiling plan or details for your particular view, here is my ceiling plan. And the question is, how would you go about creating your own save plan view? The easiest way to do that is to typically maybe find an existing view, framing, foundation, roof, and just come over here and click the duplicate option down towards the bottom of this menu by right clicking and clicking duplicate. At this point the program is going to ask you to create a name for this. And in this case I'm just going to call it ceiling no text. You'll notice that it immediately opens up a new panel. Here it is ceiling no text. At this point I can come in here and start doing some modifications. Let's right click and make a small edit in here. And for this particular view, down on the selected defaults for the layer set, I want to change that to something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and click the drop down here. And I've already created a layer set called Ceiling No Text where the dimensions and the text have already been turned off. And now you'll notice that the text, the annotations have been turned off. In the original ceiling view, those annotations and text still exist. This is a quick way that I can easily double click and open up those specific views. I can change the layer sets, I can change the tools, I can change the reference display. And if it's something that I always do, let's say you always do a reflective ceiling plan, you could build that say plan view, save it in your own custom template file. Every time you do a new plan, you'll have those settings associated with your ceiling plan and be able to be very productive on your very next project. Let's look at one more small setting in here. Let's zoom in on this particular area. I'm on the ceiling plan. I can actually open up this plan view and let's go in and make sure that one, I'm saving the specific floor, in this case the first floor, and it's specific to the zoom factor that I have zoomed in. Notice how we're zoomed right into this office area. So this is saved with the zoom factor and the floor factor. And now when I close that view, let's reopen it by double clicking on it. Notice that it's zoomed right back into where we left that zoom factor. It's an effective tool if you're working maybe on a large plan and you want to be zoomed in right to a specific area inside of that plan and maybe also floor specific. 
Safe plan views are an effective way to manage your work process. Make sure you take advantage of these safe plan views. You can learn more about these views and default sets and defaults by watching additional videos. We also have a built-in help file. Thanks for watching.